Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Norcold Tech 2 RV refrigerator. I'm reviewing this unit because uh, several reasons. One is compared to other ice boxes or igloos, you know, camping cooler type uh, refrigeration units, this Tech 2 made by Engel, E-N-G-E-L, really does work as advertised. Most of the problems I've read, sometimes there's electronic issues. This one's very old and has worked perfectly for me. But generally speaking, they are tremendously reliable. Much more reliable than a standard refrigerator or a, even an air conditioning unit. Anything that has a Freon system that's using a compressor. The second advantage, and this would be for maybe some of my subscribers who do a lot of off-roading or do, you know, remote lake fishing, those kinds of things where you may be going off-road. Uh, it's nice to not just have to rely entirely on ice. You can, of course, put ice in this. If we open it up here, it does have quite a bit of space. And one nice thing I like about the design is the whole radiator coil goes 360 degrees around the bin. And then it has this kind of removable cage just to make things easier to get in and out of. And so you're not scraping and denting up uh, the sides of the cooling channels. Another nice feature is that this door can come completely off. It just sets off like that if it's more convenient for you, or you can just open and close it like normal. The big deal about this, it does have a thermostat, is one, it will run on AC or DC 12 volts, or 13.8 in an automobile. And two, it only uses 3.5 amps at 12 volts, which is just under 40. It's just a little above 40 watts, so actually really low power usage, and it could be run off a solar panel. One thing about running these off of DC is they hate noisy uh, power supplies. So you couldn't really use like a switching computer power supply because that would even have quite a bit of noise. And the electronics inside this are real sensitive to that. And it even has a warning label telling you to only to really uh, only connect it to a battery or if you're using a battery charger, don't just run it off the you know a charging unit. You still need a battery to really smooth out that ripple. Which seems strange, but this has a uh, Sawajui, or if I'm, I can't, you know, I never can pronounce, language is not my strong point, and many people criticize me over it, but this has a Sawajui resonant refrigerant pump, and that's really the big deal and why I'm making a review of these. Now these can be found in like older Winnebago and some other uh, motorhomes and RVs, that's actually how I ended up finding this one. There is a junkyard in my area which does get RVs in. And this relates, some people have had issues with these in RVs, but usually it's because this whole thing is tucked into some kind of hole and then there just isn't enough ventilation for the hot side here to really clear out. These work best when the hot side is just completely exposed or open. If it's going to be pushed in any, any kind of compartment, you need some type of fan uh, to get air moving through the coil. Otherwise, it just can't transfer to the heat from the inside to the outside. And it is passive. There are no fans in this unit. There's only one motor, and that's the compressor. However, the compressor is interesting in this unit. And let me readjust this here. This is really what makes this unit very special. Um, anybody who moves appliances or maybe is more in the know realizes that if you take an air conditioner and set it on its side or refrigerator and move it and set it on its side, uh, you can ruin it. If you just take it home, upright it, and then plug it in because all the oil seeps out of the actual pump cylinder. It also turns out that things like home refrigerators, air conditioners, they can have to be really, really level. If they're off just by 5 degrees, it can really start causing issues for them. And it's one unknown fact that refrigeration systems really do need to be kept level. And that's the big deal about this compressor is it can operate at up to a 30 degree angle. If I were to kind of show what that would look like, that means that this thing could be tilted way up like this and still work just fine. It's due to one reason, due to the long cylindrical compressor instead of a small tank. And two, even though this is a motor, it's more like a solenoid. There's only one moving part. There is, an, there is a piston, but there is no crankshaft and traditional rotating motor. Instead, it is just an electromagnetic coil that's connected, well, that's on the outside, and then the piston has some magnets on it, and then it has a resonant generator circuitry for when you plug in the 12 volts, because since this is an 
oscillating system, it needs to have a signal, and it also converts the signal from the AC that goes into it, which of course makes this pretty nice because you can plug it in at home on AC, pre-chill it, and then plug it into 12 volts in your vehicle and keep it nice and ice cold. This will reach negative 5 degrees, just as low as your home freezer. And if it's a sunny day, you can have a couple solar panels or even a marine or a boat battery. Plug it into that, and this thing would run all day off a of marine battery. It, the motor uses a set of springs and then that piston, which just has magnets on it. And when you turn it on, it just starts vibrating, and that's how it compresses the fluid. So it has a, oh, one advantage is it can operate at just extreme angles, which makes it really nice especially on boats, which are going up and down and rocking around. But it has another real distinct advantage. Many people know that like air conditioners and refrigerators, if you unplug them and then plug them back in, turn them on and off, on and off, uh, the compressors really don't like it because they actually have a crankshaft. And um, when they're been operating and there's a big pressure differential and you turn them off and you try to start them back up, it's just too much force, too much resistance. And so the temperatures have to kind of equalize for a little bit until the pressure drops and then the pump can start going again. That's why it's so bad for traditional AC systems and refrigerant systems uh, to be turned on and off. Since this does have a resident compressor with no crankshaft and no connecting rods or any of that, when it starts up, it just starts vibrating a tiny bit. Even if you just turn it on and off, on and off, even if it's at full pressure, it will just vibrate a tiny amount and then slowly uh, increase its uh, stroke until it reaches full stroke and gives you full refrigeration capability or compression capability. And that's a real big deal since it's a resonant system. It doesn't like a piston on a crankshaft. It has to do the full pressure cycle for the crankshaft to rotate around where this is resonant. So it can actually, I would say, is a variable displacement compressor. That would be the easiest way of putting it, maybe more like modern comp rotary compressors on automobiles. Most people don't know, but the air conditioning systems on cars, the air conditioning pumps actually are variable, where they have a special plate in them, where it can adjust how far in and out the pistons go, so it can compress a little bit or it can compress a lot. This does it just through an engineering mechanical design, uh, just through its resonance, where if there's a lot of pressure, it just can't move very far and then it kind of has to vibrate and resonate until it gets up to its full stroke. If it's, you know, totally warmed up and hasn't been used in a while, then of course there's no pressure difference and it immediately operates at its full stroke. It's a very interesting type of compressor design. When these refrigerators came out, they were like $500 due to the cost of that compressor. This compressor, unfortunately, there are a few stand-up, you know, home-based refrigerators that use it, but uh, it's pretty rare in those applications because due to its design, it has to be very tall and that just doesn't work with the spacing that's in refrigerators. But that's the big deal to this Nortec. So I just want to do a quick review on this thing, just kind of talk quickly about it, how well it works. It just uses a standard computer IEC cord when you plug it into the home at the wall. On the back of it here. It is heavy. I mean, it is all steel. This thing's made in Japan. And it has this little window here, so you plug it in at home. And then when you want to plug it into 12 volt, it has a separate special cord, so you can't accidentally plug the 120 volts into the 12 volt connector. And you just plug it in. And it's what's nice about this type of compressor is you can just immediately unplug it and plug it back into the new unit or into the automobile or truck or whatever you have. And the fact that it's really efficient and then that can be rocked uh, around on many different angles and then once again just being able to handle just repeated power cycles. This is pretty much the best refrigerator slash freezer that you can get in this form factor. I wholeheartedly believe it. So these Norcolds and the Ingalls, some people may be familiar with these and they really do work as advertised as long as you have ventilation on the back half of these. And even though they're heavy, uh, you're getting what you expect. You're actually getting a real refrigerant compressor. You're getting a very special, tremendously reliable compressor. Since it only has that one moving part, that resonating piston, the, the compressor effectively lasts forever. I mean, it'll last for decades. 
So anyway, I just wanted to do a quick review of this. It's really been pretty handy. If you're ever like out camping at a more developed campsite or on an RV or something like that where you have access to power, uh, this thing's amazing because you actually have a freezer or you can have a refrigerator without the whole watery mess of all the ice. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.